We're back. Yes, I mean, we, you know, we're having some good times and fun, and you know that's what uh, photography is all about. We've had a couple good days of uh, photography, going out and shooting, learning more about the IQ. For taking pictures, talking about cameras, uh, and then you being excited about getting those images into Capture One Twelve. Yes, and uh, like always, when I get my images into the, the raw processor, Capture One, my raw processor, it's the only one I have the choice. Well, it's the only one you need. <laughs> it works so good, <laughs> but it's always exciting to see your images. What is more exciting is adjusting your images now. For many of you that have been on workshops with me, you know that I love doing image processing with a glass of wine. And or two. <laughs> Bottle or of bottles wine. or a case. <laughs> yeah. It's not unusual to come back from Antarctica and go, well, this was a case and a half of right. editing. But yeah. uh, the good part is it should be just as much fun editing your images as it is taking your images. And Good uh, point. Yeah, and I think we're going to go into showing how much more fun it has now become with some of the new features yeah. uh, of Capture One, and specifically. Yeah, and what I, what I want to go over, I'm, I'm not going to go over all of Capture okay. One. That'll take days. Um, but I am just going to go over kind of what makes 12 uh, different and some of the features that we put okay. in there. You already sat down with Lau, and he went over kind of the broad strokes philosophy and thought process behind Capture One 12. Um, and Capture One 12, you know, is very much a, a starting point for us to continue to build and expand Capture One software. So right off the bat. We have a new UI. Very, very pretty looking. It's, yeah. it's not that different, but... It's it's not, and it is. I know, I but mean, that's, that's why I don't know how to explain. It, it's familiar, right. you but can't, it's, it's more pleasant. You can't have a new user interface that's a complete 180. Right. You have to you know, do an iterative step of where you are, but really we just looked at all the different ways that we can consolidate menus, clean up all of these, you know, the software has just expanded and expanded and expanded. So how can we clean this up? How can we really simplify it? Uh, and then just in the actual uh, graphical user interface, just making it a bit more simpler, you know, adding a, a little bit more contrast, making the buttons and dials a little bit bigger. And all of this goes back to serve. If we can make it simple now as we grow it, you know, that transition into more complexity will be a little bit easier. Always thinking about the future. Yeah, that's, uh, that's kind of our deal. Cool. So um, I think you know, what, what Lau talked about and what we'll go over is, is just kind of the fundamentals of what we added into 12. And I think one of the, the biggest stories aside from, we cleaned up the UI, that's always nice to have, uh, is the layers. So when we go to the layers tools, you know, in Capture One Eleven, we we changed how the layers work and where you can access them in the software, knowing that the layers is going to be a huge platform on which we're going to grow and expand. Uh, so the first thing that we we put in here with the new layers, uh, there's there's of course new new different brushes that we'll get into in a second. We have your gradient mask and your your radial mask, uh, but it's the uh, the Luma range. So in, in the vein of a new simple to use UI, you're gonna drive, Kevin. Oh. And we're gonna go over you know, just this one new adjustment, uh, new addition to the actual layers, and it's the Luma range uh, selection tool. So I'm gonna create a layer? Yeah, but before you do that, so delete that layer. I'll oh. walk you through it. Jumping the gun again. So what we can do with this is just click and hold that plus uh, button to add a new layer, and you're gonna add a new filled layer. So this layer is just going to be a complete, you know, covering the entire image with a mask. So if we hit M on the keyboard, we should see that everything's red, right? right? So we've made a mask that covers everything. Got it. So what the Luma range tool allows us to do is actually just select a, a specific luminosity within that mask. So now we have a mask that covers everything. Okay. So now let's kind of limit what it is we want to select. So can if I you, click the Luma? You can. You have my permission. <laughs> click the Luma range. Don't want to get ahead of myself. God forbid. Yeah. So the Luma range gives yeah. us kind of the parameters of what we're going to select. So okay. we have our shadows. We have our highlights uh, up here at the top. We have our little roll off so we can transition from the shadows. So if you could, let's grab, let's try and grab the sky and that'll be kind of the waterfall of this image. So we're going to move this. There you go. So now what I'm doing is remember the bright side is 255 or the, right. the, the, the dark side is uh, zero. zero. And the slope actually is allowing a 20% right. um, uh, gradation into it. So right. well, I guess we'll come back to that. But uh, this is very similar to levels when you... Yeah, you know, I mean, it's, it's based on the absolute value, right. zero to 255. So and what we're telling this is to put a mask over just a certain selection of those absolute values. So now I'm, I'm, I want to change or, or really focus on the sky and the highlight areas. Mm -hmm. And I've gotten this far. I mean, if I pull it back, I can get the whole sky. 
when you yeah. get everything else with it. Yeah. So now I kind of have that spot where if I start moving any further, mm -hmm. I'll start. Yeah, but go it. ahead and, and move it more toward the right so we don't get any of the, okay. the ground. Now, yeah, we're going to lose some of the sky, but this is where this roll off okay. comes into play. So, so now grab, grab the bottom cursor. There you go. And drag that over. And now we can kind of blend in that mask into those values in oh, the sky. Uh, so it's a balance of finding, you know, we want the sky, not the, the ground, uh, but uh, you'll be able to figure that out. So oh. if you pull this, this uh, the roll off closer, so move that over to the right. Okay. And now just why don't you go ahead and grab the entire range that you selected and just kind of move it around. Now you can see, you know, how you can fine tune, off. yeah, you can fine tune that uh, Luma range. So, that is so spectacular. So this is a parameterized uh, mask that we're making. Right. So it's based on these specific values. Uh, so it's incredibly powerful because this value can be applied to any other mid image and you know create a mask uh, with right. the same parameters. Um, now so, I'm picking up a lot of highlight areas in the grass and ground here. We, right. can, we can eliminate that in the end too. Sure, right? yeah, if we want to. Okay. Um, if you go down your radius, yep. so if you go ahead and just crank that radius, this is just kind of going to be you know how we how we transition that mask into everything else. The sensitivity is going to be kind of the feather. How yeah. sensitive is it to those values that you put in there? Uh, how do you kind of blend all those things together? So we can see in the uh, real bright areas of the sky and some of the waterfall. Mm -hmm. How that now... So go ahead and, and move that sensitivity slider, and this will just help you kind of blend that mask into the surrounding area. Ah, uh, okay. And so just let go once it catches up there. So if this is the mask that you selected, you selected that Luma right. range, go ahead and hit apply. Apply. And now this is the mask that's, that's created. Now what makes that Luma range is, uh, so powerful is it's a modifier for the mask. Okay. So I can uh -huh. begin by drawing a normal mask, painting in a normal mask. I can create a mask by any other means, but then I can use the Luma range to restrict and kind of fine tune what that uh, that mask is. Um, I can, of course, now that I've made this mask, I can apply those those, those uh, ranges to any other image. I can invert those. So it becomes, you know, just by adding one modifier to creating and selecting a mask, now all of a sudden we have access to all the other tools. So let's make a, make an adjustment here. This sure. would be probably exposure a little bit. We could bring that right. sky down. And you can see once you start making that adjustment, the mask yeah. disappears. So you can see what it is you're doing. And then once you let go, you should see the mask again. Yep. So if we want to, we can go ahead and we can erase some of that mask. All right, so we would pick the eraser tool, which yep. we seem to have selected. And then you can erase where that mask is. So we're going to be taking it off of, you know, I used to always call this the overspray. The overspray, sure, that'll work. But I mean, right now it can work like any other mask, but we have to remember that it is based on a parameter that we set. True. Now, we don't have to do an entire fill layer. For example, we could have just painted a mask across the top mm -hmm. and done the same thing right. without affecting the waterfall, done one for the waterfall, sure. and you know, made several separate ones. But by doing a complete fill mask, right. we're more or less doing a global and then cleaning up some of the stuff we don't want to, right. to come back in later. But so. let's say we wanted to do exactly what you just mentioned. We can use another tool in there uh, to actually give us a nice transition of the sky okay. and then use the Luma uh, range to modify that. So if we go ahead and just turn off that mask that we just made and let's create a new one and just an empty mask. So just click the plus sign, right? And now let's go in here where you have your eraser. Yep. Click there. And what you're going to do is, is grab the linear gradient mask. So that linear gradient mask, just uh, draw a line across the horizon. Across the horizon, roughly. Sure. And right now you're going left to right. Yep. Yeah, but look at you. You already figured out how to adapt it. If you uh -huh. grab that middle line, you can rotate it. So now that we've made that mask using the gradient tool, now you can click the Luma mm -hmm. range. And now you can just go ahead go and decide. what we did before. There you go. Ooh. So that Luma range is used just to modify your masks, and it is a, a fixed set of criteria that makes that mask. So now I can take this and copy it to any other image, and it'll create a mask over those same values. So now if we look at uh, what I just showed you there was the, uh, the, gradient, the linear gradient mask, okay. right? 
Um, let's go find a, another image. Uh, if we go to that one below there, we've got this guy hanging out on an iceberg. Ah, such an Instagram shot. <laughs> there you go. But let's say we wanted to uh, put a vignette over that image. Okay. Now, Capture One has always had a vignette tool, and lucky as it may be, it's right here on this uh, toolbar. So if you go down to the bottom and create a vignette, and just crank it down to a negative vignette, so a vignette is going to be very specific to just the frame. And we have some options on there. You can do a vignette to the actual the frame of the image, a vignette to the crop. Uh, you can do more of a, a, a oblique um, or circular, elliptical is the term we use, yep. uh, vignette. But if that vignette isn't cutting it, go ahead and uh, just reset that. Well, now we have, if you go in here to where your masks are, we have the circular radial gradient mask. So let's create a circular radial. There you go. So there's a whole bunch of different ways that we can actually use this. So if you go ahead and just create a, a radial mask, uh, I'm sure you're familiar with the concept. So right now we've uh, made sure that we created a mask on everything but him. Uh, and if you right click on that, you can go ahead and you can actually do the opposite. So you can draw a mask inside that selection. Doing, okay, sorry, let's right click. Yep, so if you just click that little option there, draw a mask inside, it'll change the behavior of that mask. That little yeah. check mark there. It changes the behavior of that mask. So now, click and make a new one. New mask? Yep. Just click outside of it. There you go. So now you're making a mask inside that radius. And then, of course, we can invert that or we can you know, do whatever we want. So very, very slick. Now you can change the... Right, you can change the, the shape oh, of it uh, so if you hold sweet. down uh, Alt. Now all of a sudden it's going to peg the other side so you can get the right shape that you want. So, so you got to click on one of the handles there. Oh, I did there. We go. There you go. And see how it kind of anchors oh, the other anchor, side. And then I can, so yeah. when you hit Alt, it's going to anchor one side and you, you're, you, you affect the other. Exactly. So this just allows you to create that uh, that that radial mask exactly how you want it to be. You can grab the, the two handles on the outside, the inner circle and the outer circle, uh, and that will adjust your feather. So. Yep, so now you have a really, really soft feather. Very sweet. So now if we wanted to, you could go ahead and you could invert this mask. So if you go up here to the actual layer tool and just right click on there, you have invert mask. Now we have the exact opposite. If we turn off the mask using M, go ahead and reduce the exposure. And now we have what uh, you know equates to a vignette, but a very specific vignette. Oh, God, this is such a nice tool. And now let's keep in mind the power of that. That is a uh, parameterized uh, mask, where it is making a, a radial mask, but we can modify that with the actual Luma range if we wanted to. So if within that mask we only wanted to select, you know, the, uh, the, the black of his wetsuit, well, we could do that with the, the Luma so range. So we can click on Luma range, and then instead of doing the shadow side, we're going to bring... Right, and just click right. delay ma uh, display mask so everybody can see it. There we go. So now in that mask that we created, which was this whole big vignette over the image, now we're just going to go ahead and create, select just the shadows that that falls into. So that modifier, that Luma range modifier, is incredibly powerful for any mask that we create. And again, it is just based on those values. This is so nice and fly. Right. So now, in this particular case, you, you selected some of the sky up here. Sure. And we can go ahead and we can erase that. So we can go to the Erase tool. Yep. A little bit bigger. So in this case, it's asking you if you want to rasterize the actual layer, because what we've done is we've created a layer first with a mask, we've modified it with the Luma range, but now we want to adjust that, uh, that mask. So in this particular case, it needs to take it away from being a parameterized mask, being based on these values, and just make it a normal mask as if we painted it in. So by rasterizing, it, essentially, we lock in the adjustments. You lock in the mask to everything that you've selected. If and you hit rasterize right now. And then we can go in and do the Now it'll allow you to erase it and so. clean it up. And so now this mask is specific to this image. Copying this mask and its values to another image wouldn't make any sense because you would no. just be copying no. that exact structure. But what we've just done is we've, we've created a mask that uh, you know, we, we know where we want the mask to fall, then we've limited the actual values in which it selects, and now we can go ahead and we can adjust just the shadows of all the ice and everything. This is very nice. So 
if we had multiple images and we wanted to now, if his arms were up or done mm -hmm. anything different, we're going through and the water will continually turn black, but it's not built around you know the ice. So if you shift your angle or anything like that, you're only working on the tonality of the image. If we did that before we rasterize it. Oh, before it, we rasterize yep, it, yes. Then you would you be know. absolutely correct. So let's, let's actually go, you shot some images on, uh, on Sunday. Yep. Let's actually do, uh, kind of explore what we just did with these few examples with your specific images.